I'll just say a quick thanks for all the extra talks that have been written recently. It's been a while since I had gone through those documents. And thank you very much. <laughs> Just says a new mem. <laughs> I'll just talk. Um, uh, yeah, having sort of talked about this with Gregor last DebConf and had various talks with him about how it was a good idea and how I should really join and sign up, I think I finally sent an email about two months ago and actually only uploaded my first already existing package about three days ago. Um, and that was more my fault than anyone in the product group's fault. But I followed the instructions and in the how you do the SVN inject thing and, and all of that, and it all just worked. So it looks like the docs are good. Um, and it wasn't that I was scared to join because of scary people on the list. I was just trying to find enough time. So I think that lots of things you're doing are right. We are pleased to have you with us. Uh, I am new uh, and I am considering joining this group. I would like to know which kind of tasks uh, can be taken care of uh, by somebody who knows Perl but not much about anything else. We have a thousand and two and three hundred packages. <laughs> <laughs> we have tasks. <laughs> okay. <Lots of. laughs> Is Perl 6 uh, going to come to Debian somehow? Somehow, somewhere, yes. Yeah. When, how, nobody knows. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, uh, there, yeah, there, there is already a Perl 6 in Debian. Uh, there are several, in fact. There is Rakudo, and I think there, there was bugs, at least for some time. But, well, the thing is, uh, people expect the Perl 6 transition to be something that uh, happens sure. on a given moment. Perl 6 has existed for a long time, yeah. but still the most important implementation is and will be for a very long time Perl 5. Yes. And basically everything we're handling right now are Perl 5 modules. I mean, well, this group, uh, this group is in charge of over 1,000 modules. So yes, some of those modules implement some Perl 6 functions under Perl 5 or behavior rather than functions. But uh, don't worry about Perl 6. It will come eventually. If you want to play with it, then take the parrot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Rakudo is parrot, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. It's, the package is called parrot. Okay. okay. And implements Perl 6. Okay. Is it the same parrot as was in Debian before? Yeah. Uh, I just update to, to a uh, uh, minor point boring is today. It's already installed, yeah. yeah. Uh, I invite you to use the microphone because at least Jeremiah is following us. Following us. Okay. Hello. Uh, yeah. Okay, there are some. <laughs> there are some information from IRC. Jeremiah shouts that Parrot is the virtual machine. Ryan says Vaduku isn't packaged and can it be packaged? Yes. <laughs> Could you please just follow all on IRC? So, why did IRC say something so we all can understand? No, no. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ryan, you have a camera? I hope Jeremiah doesn't mind too much if we miss a bit of the. I mean, it will be recorded. I think Tincha took care of it, but let's not distract ourselves too much. I think this okay. is. A, It's working. One of them in the camera. It's working. 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 It's Maybe we should start to look on the list of topics for discussion. They are still in, uh, in, in the Debian wiki, as I've written in my last mail, and I've just now pasted it on IRC. 
wiki.debian.org slash teams slash Debian Perl group slash open tasks in friendly nice camel case. Open For those who want to, uh, Debian dash Perl. Oh, okay. If you're joining now, I can paste it again. Sure. Put it in the topic. Yeah. How does topic manipulation work? in the previous meeting notes, which, uh, well, we have decided some things and some things are, are really decided, right? So we have uh, much less to talk about today, which is good because the beer will get warm if we mm -hmm. have to talk much longer. So the first thing to do is the subversion to git migration. There is no any progress. I am to blame. Yeah, I don't know what to do about that. Someday, in a rainy Sunday, yeah, it obviously DevConf wasn't the, the nice, the, the right place for me. I got distracted by some tiny organizational details we we had to solve so yeah here we are yeah <laughs> next yeah we decided that the policy will change about the dependence on pro 5.6 dual left models keep to irritate us every now and then Applications, yeah, we just live with that. La la. Hmm. We don't have much to decide. Oh, so we're ah, that check something thing. Somebody has to do it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we need a volunteer. The, 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 the check something of the Debian rules and automatic update a bit. Yeah, don't remember, don't recall. So the, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah, automatic yeah. update of no, the no, rules should be performed only if the current file matches are known checksum that is also automatically generated. I'm just confused because I'm looking at the open tasks page and you're looking probably at the minutes. At the minutes, the yeah. Last one, so it's a different mm. order. Ah, order, yeah. No, no, fine, just, just go ahead. So we some need some volunteer for this to make it happen. Okay, team takes care. Hmm, I like that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you took a task, no more than 10 tasks per person. <laughs> uh, still work in progress. We already had the pet support, thanks to Gregor++. Plus plus. Uh, do we need a cron job for that? For the still work in progress. I don't. I don't think so. It shows up now in pet as a warning flag, a uh, uh, hover thing, and the, the clean up has to be done manually anyway. What we could do also is to add an icon or something that is even more uh, visually attractive. Now it's just underlined. Mm -hmm. You might miss it. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. Focusing on sh a form rather than uh, meaning. Well, okay, I wouldn't. I mean, 
I, I, I think PET is quite in a understandable and visually nice way for the amount of information it, it, it handles. So uh, I wouldn't put too much energy into making it beautiful. Uh, sorry, when I said uh, attractive, I, I wanted to say something that catches your attention because it's old. It was not pretty. Oh, oh. I wanted to say something blinky. Ah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Uh, if you want, I can implement the blink tag on, uh, on, on Flash. <laughs> With sound. <laughs> boink, 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 boink. Uh, at, at what frequency? At what, <laughs> at what bit rate? We want to know. <laughs> okay, okay think, that yeah. bit rate. <laughs> think to go ahead and like into the stage WIP packages. Next point. Think to did what? No, I, 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 I an icon. That's something to be more, be more, 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 something that is more than just an underlined SOBS. In what section? Ah, that's still, uh, still, still work in progress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Intro adds flash. Okay. Uh, who implemented ignore version change log handling? Sorry, Ryan. I don't remember. Ryan, okay, Ryan purpose. Ryan implemented it in PET and Brian Cassidy has done the work of adding this ignore version, blah, 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 in I think uh, hundreds of packages and almost got, got mad. So I think he also deserves uh, our thanks. <laughs> Right, next topic. Uh, we are nowhere with deciding what standard headers we will use. There is uh, a wiki page about this. Mm -hmm. Link from to. Well, we, we need some mm, standard phrases in the changelog that, that uh, act as, as a flags uh, indicating some states that we are interested in for pet and some uh, stuff like this. Like ignore version which is already implemented. Where was that page? Yeah, who works on that? We yeah, we so need somebody to track this down and s get it finished, one way or another. I don't have any idea on that. Okay, I'll take it. Mm. <laughs> Yummy. Where is that paste? Yeah, and given my success with Git attempts, um, that will be for Christmas. Yes, Jeremiah, they're green. <laughs> we like green. They're very cool, actually. There is no anybody else with t-shirts like this. Even Apple is not as green. This is super green. Right, rename source packages. I think Gregor is already on this track? Recently maybe... There were very few packages that needed this uh, rename. Yeah, maybe five, ten? Uh, well, I've, I've renamed uh, the easy one, meaning uh, those packages that only provide, uh, create one binary package that is actually a library, so I renamed the source package to be the same. And I've, I've sent a list of the other packages. Mm -hmm. 
uh, which provides several binary packages are, are really applications and not libraries and I, I think we can leave them there about I don't know five or something. So you're saying this this is this is policy this should be done? Or because I just recognize some of the CDBS packages I have been saying that uh, <coughs> it's like that. It's not like that. That is a different source package. I I named the source package as upstream named it source package and then the binary as Debian policy. Is it now policy in Debian that in uh, Debian Perl that the source package should be named equally to well the we, we, we have to yes, there's no reason to have it otherwise. Well, yeah, we, we usually do it that way. So usually, that's my so question. So uh, let me tell you specifically, please do not ever have a source package name which does not have a corresponding binary package of the same name without a very good reason for doing so. There oh. is no reason if, I hear you. You, if you are only producing one package. The m primary reason to consider doing that is if you are packaging a library and your library has a so name. That's the only reason to consider having a source package name which does not have a corresponding binary package of the same name. Uh, but I, I, I think that the, the main problem here is that, for example, we have some few uh, salient packages like uh, MIME tools, which should be lib MIME tools Perl, or uh, well, okay, or, uh, like Magic, which should be lib image Magic Perl. Right. Uh, is, is it so important that it, 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 it is relevant to clean up this? Now I'm talking okay. also okay. about Debian, so uh, Debian Perl. Is so generally about pre-existing packages, it's much more of a pain to handle having renamed the source package. So, okay. so unless you have a real serious reason to need to rename your source package, um, it may not be worth it. Uh, and the reason why that is, I'm telling you that's problematic is because tracking down the conversion between uh, version propagation as far as the BTS concerned and figuring out which source package was a uh, descendant of a different one is so, so the uh, yeah it is uh, more problematic ah. um, so I mean if it's just if it's causing you a serious problem then okay yeah fine and there's no bugs against that package whatever that's not my problem but it's something that uh, you need to be aware of because it's very difficult to uh, know which source package goes to what descendant when you change names. As far as the BTS is concerned, it generally looks like it's a whole new package. I promise I will never do it again. Sorry, sorry. Oh, no, no, no. It's, <laughs> it's not my problem. It just means that, uh, that your bugs all of a sudden, you have to manually play with your bugs. Um, and so that, I mean, in small cases, it's probably not what you need to do, but in big cases, it's a problem. The good news, the few packages I've remained don't have any open bugs. Yeah, so, so yeah, there are no open bugs for stuff that really doesn't matter. It's, 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 this is really a problem for big packages. So uh, yeah, if your package has two bugs, then it doesn't matter. I learned something new. <laughs> okay. So we are still following the minutes from last. Package check needs to be rewritten in Perl. Package check is this nasty. Yes. Who does that? Jeremiah, can you rewrite the package check in Perl? You, you've been volunteering, no. I'm being told. Yeah. Silence means agreement. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Thanks. Great. Okay, I note this. Yeah, the next point which we have discussed and where there hasn't been any progress since last week, at least as far as I know, uh, is the question of patches. We have some patches in our packages, mostly fixing <laughs> small errors, uh, and we're not really good at forwarding them. 
upstream. So this needs to be done. And we've also been talking about uh, standardizing the meter information in the patches. And since there is this DEP3, we might just as well use it instead of inventing something new. My, my idea was, and I actually my plan was to, to at least write the idea down in a bit more words, but that my idea was to have some tool like patch change uh, that's, that would be just, well, a simple wrap around an, an, an editor that opens up your, your patch and adds the, the necessary headers, converts the existing ones, and I guess it's not really difficult to write for someone who knows how to write such stuff, but it might be really, really handy, maybe with some command line options. So some, something like depth change, but mm -hmm. for editing patch headers to have them standardized. Mm. Unfortunately, neither have I written my thoughts down, nor has anyone volunteered yet to work on it, but mm, maybe we can find someone now. Uh, attract some new? Yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, I think this tool would be useful before uh, chasing all the patches if there are four. Yeah, exactly. Because it will be easy uh, with that tool, plus having such uh, a great amount of work with it would uh, help testing and if there is some possible improvements in that tool that it will show up if it's used. Yeah, and if the patches have the correct for, uh, f forwarded no or whatever header, then it's very easy to find out which patches have to be forwarded. Maybe even the tool has some some switch to prepare a mail that can be forwarded or something like that. Patch tech. Patch change doesn't <coughs> feel right as a name. Yeah, okay. we have to decide about the name. That's very <laughs> important. Yeah, <laughs> he or she who writes this tool may decide on the name. Ah. Yeah. And in the end, it belongs into the in, into dev scripts, I, I guess. But it, if someone mm -hmm. from our group would write it and we try it, then I guess they would be happy to accept it. So, any volunteers? Do we have any way of tracking which f uh, patches were forwarded and what, which not? Uh, do we actually uh, was using uh, <coughs> on the uh, on the pa on the patch we are using to put the RT bug number if the package was forwarded? And I remember that I had suggested at some point uh, at the beginning of the year. Uh, using a name convention, like a state if the package is forwarded or the package is just valid for for something that not not being forwarded, and that could be uh, still could be gave a, a a good idea if you if you don't need to open the pa the patch. And maybe it will be better if we if we start using uh, tags to use tags, tags for everything yeah. instead of renaming the file each time. We have been talking about this in, in, in the last meeting, and we said if we adopt this DEP3 with the, the headers, whether it's one forwarded, yes, no, doesn't need, or however, then we actually don't need to use the, the, the file name because it's already there. In fact, I expect when, if, whether DEP3 is approved. It would be close enough to what we are already doing, but it would not be a pain to just adopt it. And the good thing is that DEPs don't have to be approved. We can just use them like we do it with the copyright thing, where people uh, are, are, still f are still flaming about it and we are using it for a year. So. Yeah, we use this in a thousand of packages. We declare this a standard, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. 
Next. Uh, mm. I don't remember if it's here in the list, but the other thing we were talking about was the um, set the headers in control file for for uh, huh? the for the work truck. Yeah. Oh, it was already discussed. Uh, we were discussing about uh, having pseudo headers in the control file for uh, for, for for the bug tracker okay. for for having a, a tool for forwarding batches or sending bug tracks. The idea is to for this uh, batch editing tool to be able to help developers to forward bugs upstream. So it may construct a mail that is uh, almost ready to be sent. It won't send anything automatically. Human interaction will be required. But still, some help in this regard will be very useful. And for this, we need to know where the bugs are to be sent. And for this, we think that uh, a pseudo header in the Source control file would be the appropriate place to add that. It will be useful not only to that tool, well, and maybe it can be useful only to the package tracking system or somebody else, or for UDD for some nice statistics. <laughs> um, already in the DEP file, uh, proposal for the copyright file, it is uh, clarified that is under discussion <laughs> which is at the moment uh, to have the not it's not the copyright owner that is in the top but it is the contact so and it is different ways to contact the currently active person and it's an optional field which means if there's no active upstream then this does not exist if there is a currently active upstream then different ways to contact these people and so I would suggest to l try and look in the copyright file, see if there is this uh, 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 A22 <laughs> specific uh, hint, and if it's there, look if there's an email address, then use that one. If there's not an email address, or the hint is not there, then ask for it, or look for somewhere else. Instead of, instead of inventing a new place, in, do have it? are we talking about the thing? An email doesn't work for us. Because, well, in our case, we, we, from, from where we stand, we have lots of packages that use the request tracker on CPAN, which... Mm. I'm then correct, and I'm correcting myself. Then look for the kind of resources we want to look for. So then look for an HTTP string that is uh, matching the uh, Perl groups, uh, Perl upstreams uh, request tracker. I mean, whatever it is that we want to look for, look for it in the, in the copyright file because it has an open-ended hint place to place different ways to contact currently active upstream. I, I, I think we don't even have to, to add something because actually for, for CPINs RT, RT we can use the, the name field in the copyright file which is the, is the dist distribution on CPAN and, and we have to help. Unless and for the packages whose upstream doesn't like request tracker and if we send a bug there, they got irritated. You stupid Debian folks, you don't read my documentation. It's clearly stated there to use yeah, yeah, but, but, mm. but yeah. we do this anyway. Don't it, 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 it's, it's great to have uh, systematic, systematic things for thousands of packages, but we really should like similar to having hand uh, editing the files, uh, the, the emails before sending them, or the messages before sending them. Similarly, we should be able to, to express something else, whatever it is in each package. So. Yeah, yeah well, may maybe then we should add, the, add some additional information for the upstream modules where they don't use CPANS RT. But is it doesn't it make sense to, to have the information in copyright file of, of, of how to contact upstream and maintain it there? It, it, it isn't no, hurting anybody. Yeah, no, no, I'm just, just trying to find a, a pragmatic approach where we don't have, have to change 1,300 files. So my, so my idea would be use the, 
if there's no explicit uh, bug upstream something field, then just take the name field, which is the dist, and you and send a mail to to bugs dash distribution yeah. at RT. Yeah. So you're talking about like an implicit fallback. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. That is to to try th try throw it at the uh, the yeah. default the Apple uh, bug tracker. So that's that's uh, like so it seems to also cover your case. If there's a weirdo upstream, then express the weirdo things mm -hmm. in the cover up. Which is well, uh, I mean, I understand the, the thing is to make it policy, but uh, that's exactly what we do right now. I mean, uh, whenever we have something to tell upstream, we we have this uh, same default. Well, if upstream gets pissed because we are not following that same default. What are the chances that a comp the compromise panel would be approved for such a case? Simil simil similar to the, the tagging of patches, as I see it, even if it does not get approved, that does not mean that it gets rejected, that we are not allowed to express ourselves the way we do in the copyright file. So even if the, it ends with nothing, the dev file, it still makes sense to try look at the copyright file for some pattern. And if it's there, then don't use the default. We can need still continue to use it in the Perl group until something else comes up as a better default. Yeah, so my question is, do we want to use the copyright file for this? You're asking me if we want? Well, I'm <laughs> asking everybody. <laughs> and I already answered, I think. I think we you should do that. Well, I want to, I because there's a chance. <laughs> I ch there's a chance that this no, can no, become no, no. Uh, the standard. I, I, I do think that this is one of the things that have added most value to this group, that we can build on very sane and very regular uh, default values. So there, yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with this. We can uh, follow the rules. Well, when extracting yeah. information, okay, I, my question is more like no, 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 when no, no, you no, no, enter no. that information. So I, I stumble upon a package whose upstream isn't using a request tracker. Where do, do I write this? Well, uh, uh, okay, if the, if the upstream is not following, uh, is not uh, paying much attention to the request tracker, I would say instead of pointing the project homepage to CPAN, point it to whatever they want. But usually it will point to CPAN, and we know that CPAN homepages have a request tracker. So you, if uh, they, if you, they you suggest if, that we don't need develop, anything anywhere. Just follow the homepage, or, or uh, I mean, deduce from the homepage where I, the bug tracker is. I, I say that if uh. I mean that's something we have to agree as a policy. But if the homepage points to CPAN we should recognize that it's a full uh, CPAN regular thingy. If it points to Maybe. SourceForge, well, we should use the SourceForge uh, tracker. Or if it points to www.myspiffymodule.org, well... Mm -hmm. They still may use Google, of course, or... Yeah, but, but uh, if, the, if the information they provide as their main contact page and the main page to look for new module notifications falls out of the, uh, of the regular, of the, yeah, of the pattern we use for everything, then we know there must be enough information for both things. For tracking new upstream versions, which may not be on CPAN even, and for, uh, for uh, contacting regarding bugs. It should be somewhere written. Yeah, that's my question. Where? You, you are, you are not, you're not talking about where the information is. You're talking about where we should document where it is, right? Yeah. And my proposal to is to, cope, to, use, to, the to use the place that is already a work, working progress in Debian in general, not only in Perl Group, but in Debian in general. There's a proposal to store this kind of information in a hint in the copyright file. The, the problem for that I see is, first, it will be, uh, a copyright file will be always possible to have an, an unstructured copyright file. So yes. even if the, the proposal is accepted, it will not be mandatory for sure. So it will be more difficult to parse 
um, and it's not meant to be to be used like as that the copyright file only in the cases that the people are, are using the standardized copyright but maybe uh, having a, 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 a header a, file, a field in the controls uh, in the control file will be better for that because it's structured always and you can s find it always uh, I would not be worried about this because even if you do not use the structured format you can still throw in single snippets that are structured and I believe it is very simple to search to grep or Pearl like <laughs> uh, mm. to regex <laughs> for information in the copyright file, and we we might say that we only want to to uh, to use information if the first line declares that it's a uh, following the file. The file says that first line should be that this is this and this version of whatever format it is, and then you could ex uh, expect the rest of it to, to be a specific format. So look at the first line. If the first line matches some pattern then trawl the document for this kind of information. If the first line does not, then don't scan the document and give up and use the imp imp implicit default. I don't see a problem in... in, in, in uh, that is, as I see, part of the dip file that, yes, it's saying to not use the file. But I, th I see it as counterproductive to now, in the Perl group, invent a another place to place some information that is explicitly part of the file. I, I don't see a, a, a benefit for that because, as I say, it's not more uh, safe to extract the information from uh, the uh, control file than it is to extract, extract it from a dev file, a file based uh, uh, structured uh, copyright file. It is not more safe. There is a really header, um, a field for that in the, in the standard. In dev file, yes. It's exactly for backtrack. It is for contacting contact That's to upstream. Ah. But it's not exactly the bug tracker that is yeah. what we want. Okay, but so, so you want a hint that is explicitly for bug tracker upstream, yeah. not for upstream. Ah, yeah, exactly. I was talking all the time ah. about the bug tracker. Uh, on you, the, the you don't have a microphone. That, uh, on a proper meta YAML file that is documented. Uh, I, 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 I argue that it's not uh, really the case. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying no, that it should some be. Some upstreams are insane. They may have proper. Meta file uh, full with incorrect information, and they will yell with you because they state in the pod query not use uh, yeah. request. We, yeah. So we need some place for our own usage to, to state this when necessary. We have I, some I defaults. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I agree that the copyright file is an appropriate place it's, for, for, it's for it. I, 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 I recognize, I understand what you're saying now. Place and, and we still. can. Oh, and we can, in the copyright files, add some some X headers, however we like it. Exactly. Like X bug tracker or whatever, and fall, and fall back to the default. So for the five insane upstreams, we, we add some friendly okay, the header. And it's a line which we use uh, for 10 packages. So. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, we lost yeah. 10 minutes of this. <laughs> 10 minutes. I would propose contact BTS or like they tie it to the contact information, but a BTS, a specific contact type. With X or without X? With X because it currently is under discussion if it requires an X or not for uh, non uh, def default uh, hints. So with an X just to be safe. Yeah. What will be the semantic? Because if it's called contact, if we're submitting or browsing bugs, or etc. We, we can handle oh. both. It, it can be it can be the HTTP address of the request track queue, and from but this we can deduce that this is request tracker. We need to know which kind of tracker is it. If an RT or okay. if you or if you need yeah. machine readable uh, separation, then you need two different hints, uh, explicit separate hints. But if you just need multiple information in this, uh, within this, then just space limited, space delimited. Like yeah, but then the we might need to, to define a format for that at some point. Okay, 
Use one hint for each. It sounds like you really want this very, very machine readable. Then use one hint for each, each kind of, of BTS variation you, you really could think of. It's fine with me. Bloat the copyright file. It's cool. It's already bloated. <laughs> you need to, you to laugh into the microphone. <laughs> 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 So uh, we, we have to be hurry, Dam says, no beer until we're done. And, and I just said that Dam's always right. So, so we document this in X, contact BTS in Debian corporate, period. End of discussion. Someone writes the batch editing tool. I want to know who that is. Mm. Mm, yeah, then we need some way to track patches, not forward them upstream or hunt them down. Uh, is this to be in, in, in pet or how do we hmm? We need to be able to check if we have patches not forwarded upstream and work on them and either mark them as Debian specific or forward them upstream. So how, how do we start on this? Now in beta we have the list of patches and the names, so we can add parsing for the headers uh, we were talking about in the last two points, yeah. and add uh, and support to pet to mark them as issue for all this. Yeah, but you have in pet a long list of packages, some with patches, some with not, some with forwarded patches, some with not. So if I want to work exactly on this, I have to review all the the patches. We all could do a balloons. specific view for this. It's just reusing everything and doing a different template. It's just that. Hmm. Well, works for me. I can, I can even volunteer for that. You just did. Thank you very <laughs> much. Live on IRC. Intro rights and new template. Yeah. Yeah. I think with one hand is, is not there. Yeah, fixing Lintian errors repository wide. <laughs> <laughs> Some strange faces without putting the microphone on me. You were no, breathing. Okay, I, I was, <laughs> yeah, I was breathing. I often breathe. <laughs> Quite often. No, well, I think, yeah, we have some Lintian warnings, especially, say, from packages be behind, the ups uh, behind the standard version 5.6 something, that was the last one that required changes, if I'm not mistaken. Right. But uh, mostly, I think, uh, we're Lintian clean. Now, we can just query on the, uh, well, the Lintian reporting thingy uh, for, for, for what uh, reports are they generally for the group, I would bet that most of them regard, say, patches we applied before we standardize on Quilt or something like that. I, well, they have been converted, but I don't know if they have headers or so. Or I, I don't know. I mean, I, I do not feel we have so many Lintian warnings uh, group-wide. So, uh, okay. Okay, stop the face. We do. <laughs> we do some uh, uh, very boring stuff like port errors. Uh, yeah, but, but just very, very boring, uh, very boring Lintian. Pod, pod errors. Ah, yeah. yeah, but, but yeah, pod errors. But very boring uh, Lintian warnings are, I mean, there is something we should fix when there is a package upload. We, I do not think we should invest too much energy in, 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 in fixing minor Lintian warnings all over. I mean, yes, if there is an upload and there is a LinkedIn warning, fix it. Yeah, I like it. I like that. 
Hmm? Yeah, I agree. I think this is an <coughs> a nice optional project for someone who wants to do something useful and improve the quality, but well, optional. Summer of code proof. <laughs> Fastest uh, bug fixing. Oh. Okay, Jackie F is just uh, suggesting X yes as a control. X, yes. X colon yes. <laughs> let's let's continue by sharing. Yeah, I think if, if this X uh, um, leading X is uh, approved in the depth five, it must be X dash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go. Thursday. <laughs> no, it, it means the package packages. is able to talk with X. Ancient X packages. Oh. <laughs> that was your idea, Kunal. Listen, ancient packages. These are these with the, some old yeah. standard version? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. The thing is, yeah, uh, I think we should a track which packages have not been touched for a for too long time say packages which have a beat a pet should warn us about packages wh which have a very ancient standard version and which have not been touched i mean because uh, the the amount of things that should be done for a package over 2 years old is already something that that may cause us uh, uh <laughs> That, that, that may require uh, changes. So yeah, I, I would uh, add to PET. Uh, the, the, the latest change has been already started to be targeted by Gregor. Um, we can also add a check for the compatibility version if the maintainer put it on the separate file. file. If it's in the rules. Ah, the H compatible. mean. If it's, it's, yeah, if yeah, it's yeah. Debian slash compat, it's easy. Well, I it's think, I think uh, again, thinking about the general policy we are using for over 1,000 packages, if compat is inside rules, uh, something should be warned. I think nowadays it's also an intern warning. Or yeah. Yes. Yep. So, yeah. We can so it's done. Cases and put it as an error. Mm -hmm. How about simply looking for the, the, the la latest upload is very ancient. As a, a signal. Because uh, okay. Because I was just so thinking that that's that's not an ancient as it is. Okay. Volunteers needed. Okay. Ryan is working on unifying the repacking script. Okay, uh, we have reached the next topic, this uh, repack script. Ryan has actually committed a proposal already some days ago. I wrote the mail on the list making some suggestion for a minor change and that's the status. Maybe someone should take Almost a look at done. it and then we just uh, use it. Do or? any packages use it? Shall I grab? <laughs> yeah. Almost done. Comments welcome. Next. Half adopted no. Post Lenny. <coughs> Clean up. Remo remove of the alternate alternate build dependencies on Perl modulus five ten or some else outside. Model package. Who wants to work on this? No one. 
Does it include the dropping of the version of the dependency and the, the old one versus in the uh, version? Yeah, but that's another task. Ryan says the unified repack is done. Mm. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, as noted. I have to admit that I'm also getting tired. <coughs> Damien, what was the last task you were looking for volunteers for? Um, Postplane cleanup of the build dependencies on poor modules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I suggest we wait for. No, that's not postplane. That's post squeeze. And I <coughs> suggest we wait for the squeeze release. No. No. We don't need this after Lenny anymore. They are useless right now. Because you can no. safely depend on poor modules 5.10. Yeah, but a week ago we said, and that was written here in the, in, the, in the minutes, we do this after squeeze because we want to make backporting easier. That's yeah, that's, my, that's what my note says too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the to-do was about removing transitional packages. Yeah, I've done it already. This is done already. And unless we change our mind now, we, we leave those alternative build dependencies. I will secretly do my job and no one will notice. <laughs> so that's done. Some plus pluses. Yeah, the next one is this. The next one is this upload of the half adopted packages. Those mm -hmm. I don't know how many hundreds we have taken over. Hundreds? <laughs> Hmm? We have lots. I don't know. I don't know if hundreds, but I mean, okay. I, I understand the J Bouncy ones are done, but we still have the Florian ones. And the, I don't know how many, but we still have a lot of not yet uploaded. Yeah, uploaded. and since a few days, we only have half of them because Ansgar has worked like crazy. Thanks, Ansgar. On them, it was really great, Ansgar's great job, and I've, I've uploaded them afterwards. But there's still quite a few left, and work on them would be appreciated. Ah, 70 to 80 left, yeah. yeah. Yes, make Paul. Oh. I have nothing to add. You're still there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the way it is. Yes, make Paul. On the western front, nothing new. Uh, copyright, la la la. So if you're happy, nobody else everyone's happy. Only two topics left. No, only one. Well, we also have the start page. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a different point here. Send it to check on new packages. Yeah, there's no easy way. Okay, I'm done. I am done with my list. Somebody else thinks so. And version Pro, uh, yeah, it, yeah it, it was uh, way before, and we decided that. On the previous meeting, we dropped the version from the Pro dependencies okay. if it's, it's lower than 5.8. Makes perfect sense. I don't disagree. I do agree. Yeah. 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 Actually, the, the Lintian check for that is already gone since some, oh. some time, and, and policy just needs to be uploaded. The bug is. Seconded and everything. Ooh. 
Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. No, I was just looking at the at the open tasks page. There is, I think, there's only one point that was also not, uh, that was not also in the minutes from last time. And that's the idea from from last year, drinking Antares in Mar del Plata, the local theatre. And that was the possibility of writing the letter to the pro community and telling them in a friendly but clear way what we think about module install. Crap! <laughs> So, I'm not, not sure if we want to do this, how we want to do this, but... Yeah, I think this You say better. So, anybody who thinks this is a bad idea and will just uh, create useless confrontation with install auto that's Adam Kennedy if you don't know him he seems to be a nice guy he could also have lots of ideas not every not each idea is very nice but anyway I think some people like uh, Gabor people from the Sipans uh, are really thought the same as us I think uh, they were also taking ideas from us to to create new metrics and Good procedures. Maybe if we say to them, please don't do this anymore. Okay, Maybe nobody objects. Here. So we decide to write some statement. Ryan is just asking what's wrong with it. Mm. Please. Please. <laughs> <laughs> of protest against modular install viral behavior. Okay, we can yes. write to it together on RC, on whiteboard, whatever. Then it's not urgent. We suffer from some <laughs> one year already. So, yeah. Hmm. Who's that? Fideos. <laughs> mm. All right, all right. Next topic? Beer. 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 Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's all that was... Uh, you may now speak again. remember anything. Mm. Well, so, uh, hmm. uh, beer. so it looks we can close our annual meeting or something like that. Mm. Dear guests, you, uh, you have been witnessing one of the meetings of the pro group and we will now uh, take another meeting outside of this place. Yeah, yeah uh, unfortunately ah. there is no video coverage there, <laughs> but there are a lot of uh, these kinds of pipes 
with some yellow liquid. Thanks for watching, thanks for participating. And now advertisements. A bunch? Advertisements on video. Like advertisements. Yeah. And now for the advertisements. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. See you soon, I hope. Next year, Ryan, you have to be at DebConf. No more excuses.